It's the hottest consumer technology product of the year, maybe even the last several years. Sony's PlayStation 5 is out, and if you're lucky enough to have gotten your hands on one, you're in for a real treat. But what advantages does this system have over the previous generation, and is it worth all the hype? Let's find out. PlayStation 5 is the biggest, baddest, and most extreme console to come out of San Mateo, California. It's powerful, it's fast, and it offers some incredible new features. There are two versions, one with a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray drive for $499, and one without an optical drive for $399. Otherwise, the two consoles are exactly the same. If you want to pick one up by the end of this review and maybe grab a few lottery tickets while you're at it, you can do so by using our affiliate links down below. Overall, the display packaging is decent and conveys all the necessary information. However, the way the box opens is literally the most inconvenient process imaginable, especially if you're trying to capture it on camera. I had to place my tripod on a desk adjacent to my review table to keep the unboxing within the shot. The thin outer sleeve suctions to the cardboard. The inner box then opens from the narrow end, making it difficult to pull out the components, and this isn't exactly a small product. It all just gets dumped out like a baby giraffe on the Serengeti. Nothing is presented nicely to the customer, instead you're left to fish around through a maze of cardboard and plastic for all of your components and cables. Obviously, no one should buy a console for the unboxing experience, but the whole process felt very dated. Sony has to realize that the unboxing is going to be seen by literally millions of people. Why make it so difficult? When the laborious delivery is finally over, the console really starts to shine. The sloping white side panels bookend a glossy black center. There is also plenty of Easter eggs to be found on the exterior. A series of squares, triangles, circles, and crosses mark where the included stand attaches from the back. If you look really, really closely, you can see the inner surface of the side blades is textured with the same symbols. While we've had special editions in the past, I believe this is the first time Sony has ever launched with a white console. But if that isn't enough to get your attention, its sheer size certainly will. While admittedly not an entirely fair comparison, here it is next to the recently released Xbox Series S. The PS5 measures 39 centimeters tall, 10.4 centimeters wide, and 26 centimeters deep. While Sony claims that play has no limits, your IKEA Entertainment Center may beg to differ. Like most consoles of the last couple generations, the console can be positioned either vertically or horizontally. Now you may be wondering how exactly this is done considering the uneven sides of the device. The console comes packaged with a stand intended to stabilize it in both horizontal and vertical orientations. The inner wedge of the stand must be rotated to support the console evenly. Small clips align with the square symbols on the back, and you're good to go. While not entirely necessary, Sony recommends using the stand with the console positioned vertically as well. To do this, the stand is unclipped from the back of the console and the wedge is rotated to become flat. This rotation also reveals a screw that will be used to secure the stand to the console. Place the stand on the bottom of the console and attach the screw with the included tool. Is this not the most over-engineered stand you've ever seen, a close competitor to the PS5 with very similar specs also had to solve the same problem, and their solution was a bit, well, simpler. When I said this is the most extreme console to come off Sony's production line, that wasn't hyperbole. On a strictly computational level, the PS5 is almost two and a half times more powerful than the PS4 Pro and five and a half times more powerful than the original PS4 that launched back in 2013. The brain of Sony's new flagship comes courtesy of a custom Zen 2 8 core processor topping out at 3.5 gigahertz. This new chip is complemented by 16 gigs of speedy GDDR6 RAM. Graphics processing is run on AMD's RDNA 2 microarchitecture, and the GPU has 36 
compute units and maxes out at a screaming 2.23 gigahertz. With this configuration, Sony claims the PS5 is capable of over 10 teraflops of graphical power. All 9th gen consoles have made the transition to solid state storage. However, the PS5 takes speed to a whole new level. The custom 825 gig drive has a throughput capacity of 5.5 gigabytes per second raw and 9 gigabytes per second compressed. That's twice as fast as the rival Xbox Series X. Even the highest end gaming machines are barely starting to see speeds like this, with PCIe Gen 4 drives becoming more common. Keep in mind that only about 667 gigabytes of this space is actually usable. The PS5 continues supporting external USB drives for game storage. However, this is only an option for PS4 games. PS5 games must be stored on the internal drive or an optional NVMe SSD expansion drive. Inside the PS5, you'll find a small slot for an off-the-shelf NVMe SSD. However, Sony requires the following drive criteria be met, an M.2 form factor, PCIe Gen 4, and read speeds greater than 5.5 gigabytes per second. Unfortunately, there are currently just a couple of drives in existence that meet those speeds. And even if you get your hands on one, the PS5 actually doesn't support them yet. That support will come in a future update, as well as more drives that meet Sony's lofty requirements. So for the time being, your PS5 library will have to fit on the internal drive alone. For port selection, you'll find a high-speed USB-A and a super-speed USB-C connection up front. Around back, there's two more super-speed ports in USB-A form factor, an Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1, and power. For wireless connectivity, the PS5 network adapter supports Wi-Fi 6. There's been a lot of talk around PlayStation's new DualSense controller, and after spending some time with it, it's easy to see why. The DualSense is visually similar to DualShock controllers, but with contoured edges, a splash of white paint, and a larger footprint. The stick and button configurations are pretty much the same, but the touchpad has grown considerably. Micro USB has also been replaced with USB-C for charging and connectivity. But when you pick up the controller for the first time, more differences are immediately noticeable. The DualSense is taller, deeper, and heavier than the outgoing model. Thankfully, it seems to be shaped in a way that makes it still comfortable to hold. The extra weight comes from a 56% larger battery, adaptive triggers, and advanced haptics. With this larger battery, Sony claims the DualSense can last up to 15 hours. While technically the rumble pack for the Nintendo 64 was the first time vibration feedback was widely available on a controller, it was Sony's original DualShock that popularized the technology. In the more than two decades since then, the new haptic motors in the DualSense provide the most significant advancement in controller vibration feedback to date. Delivering this experience are new voice coil actuators. As their name implies, these voice coils are derivative of the same technology that has been driving our speakers and subwoofers for years. They're a dramatic improvement over traditional rumble motors that have gone largely unchanged for generations. Unlike the spinning weights found on rumble motors, voice coil actuators can accelerate and decelerate almost instantly and provide a spectrum of sensations through various frequencies. The adaptive triggers have also improved an area of controller design that has been routinely overlooked. Right behind the triggers are a pair of motors with screw gears. These gears dynamically change the amount of pressure required to actuate a trigger pull and modify where that resistance begins. Developers are encouraged to utilize these technologies to create revolutionary new experiences. On a side note, the DualShock 4 will work with the PS5, but only with PS4 games. You likewise cannot use a DualSense controller with the PS4 console. The setup process will update the console software and controller firmware. If you have an existing PlayStation Network account, you'll then be prompted to log in. You'll then need to configure the region, language, and security settings like any other console. However, if you have a PS4, you'll want to make sure it's turned on and connected to the same network as your new PS5. This will allow the PS5 to transfer preferences, profiles, and saved game data from your PS4. The PS5 places all of your content into two broad tabs, games and media. Games list all of your recently played games in the order in which they've been played. When you're hovering over a game, the background and music will change to match. From there, you're able to see activities, broadcasts, and other content related to the game. It should also be noted that the PlayStation Store is no longer an application, but a built-in part of the user interface. The media tab houses all of the available streaming and non-gaming content in one place. If you don't like the new interface, well, too bad. 
With custom music, themes, and icons being removed from the PlayStation UI, there's really not much left for the user to customize. When in a game or application, pressing the PlayStation button brings up the control center. This is essentially a way to quickly modify settings, check game progress, or navigate around PlayStation without interrupting your current experience. Unlike the rest of the PlayStation UI, the control center is customizable to an extent. Some settings like home or notifications will always be present. Sony has recently revamped their mobile app to support the PS5 and now offers features that were noticeably missing before. The PS Messages app has been dissolved and its functionality and messaging system has been absorbed by the new PlayStation app. Players can now message each other from one centralized place. There's also some PS5 remote functionality as it allows players to purchase games from the revamped store, download and launch games, manage storage, and sign in to their PS5 directly from the app. There's a PlayStation News section that will keep players up to date on official news from PlayStation and developers. When you take away remakes, re-releases, and games already available on other platforms, the PS5 launch lineup is relatively weak compared to previous generations. Spider-Man Miles Morales, Astro's Playroom, and Sackboy A Big Adventure are the standout exclusives Sony is depending on to drive console sales. Thankfully, the PS5 is backwards compatible with PS4 games. Games like God of War, The Last Guardian, and Final Fantasy are now running at higher resolutions and frame rates, breathing new life into their already stellar experiences offered by the PS4. And just to be clear, PS4 games will not need to be repurchased for the PS5 if you already own them. As you might expect, the visuals coming out of the PlayStation 5 are incredible. Lighting technologies such as ray tracing make new games stand out, while higher resolutions and frame rates refresh older titles. While the PS5 has an HDMI 2.1 port and is capable of displaying 4K HDR content at 120 FPS, most games are not going to run at those speeds. Similar to other next-gen consoles, the available experiences will change from game to game. Some games, such as Spider-Man Miles Morales, will give you additional options to curate the game toward the experience you want to have. Performance mode targets smooth 60 FPS gameplay with dynamic resolution scaling, while fidelity mode turns on ray trace reflections and increases the resolution at the expense of a lower 30 FPS target. I would argue that we've arrived at a point where the dramatically reduced load times contribute more to an improved overall experience than the enhanced visuals do. You're spending significantly more time actually gaming. This is a really big deal for someone like me. If I know I've only got a spare 15 minutes, it's actually worthwhile to start up a game knowing I won't spend most of that time staring at a loading screen. While the controller certainly feels big in the hand, it was never unwieldy. The pronounced texture, contour grip, and improved weight distribution contribute to a more comfortable experience than even the DualShock 4. The buttons feel tactile enough, but are certainly not the most precise of this generation. The triggers, on the other hand, are on a whole other level. Developers can use these advanced triggers to add another layer of immersion to their games. If you've ever discharged a real firearm, the sensation of increasing tension until a sudden release should feel very familiar to you. While certainly impressive technology, I do wonder about longevity of the internal mechanism required to deliver this experience. In the weeks since its release, there have been a number of reports citing issues with the PS5 console. Excessive fan noise, coil whine, system instability, game crashes, charging issues with the DualSense controller, defective power supplies, and PlayStation Network bugs have all seen their fair share of headlines. While I never witnessed anything truly detrimental, I did experience an oft-cited problem where games get stuck in the download queue. Games refused to finish downloading and I was unable to restart or cancel the download. I originally planned on evaluating a few more games, but I wasn't able to resolve the issue in the brief time I had the console in my possession. While my time with the PlayStation 5 was fleeting, it left a lasting impression. Features like advanced haptics and triggers, blazing fast load times, and ray-traced visuals make the PlayStation 5 feel like the most next-gen console currently on the market. While yes, it suffers from several quality issues, a lack of exclusive new games, and very limited supply, those are issues that should mostly be rectified in time. If you own a PlayStation 4 and you're looking forward to the next generation of games and experiences, the PlayStation 5 is 
a pretty easy recommendation. However, since the majority of games coming out on the PS5 in the near future will have a simultaneous PS4 release, the incentive to upgrade right now isn't really there, especially with consoles selling for two to three times their original asking price. I'm gonna give the same advice I gave at the conclusion of my Xbox Series X review. Just wait. With this generation, maybe more than any other, there is almost no downside to waiting a few months to upgrade. We'll have more games, bugs will be fixed, and most importantly, consoles will return to their normal prices. If you're someone trying to decide between a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox Series X, that's a much more interesting question, and we've made a dedicated video to help you decide. Special thanks to my friend Josh Kicks for offering up his console for review. He hosts giveaways on his Instagram, so be sure to follow him over there. Affiliate links to any products mentioned here can be found in the video description, alongside links to our custom shirts and our own giveaways. Thanks for checking out our PlayStation coverage, and we'll catch you in the next one.